So you have homework to do before you get started. And before we even chat, and before I introduce myself, I'm going to put a link in the chat. Got it. I'm a guest. I would like you all, if you have not done so already, to please download the Skills Matrix. We will be talking about the Skills Matrix today, um, but I have a link in the chat for you if you have not done so already. Uh, we're not going to do that right away, but it is something that you may need here uh, shortly. So would love for you to be able to do that. And with that, I would like you to welcome to the coffee with a shot of creativity. Now, it does say this was supposed to happen at 1 p.m. We are not time travelers. We did not take the red pill. We did not take the blue pill. We had to move our meeting to 11 a.m. Um, but what we're going to look at today is I am so excited to be joined by a good friend of mine, fellow ID Lancer, Jennifer Edenfield. Uh, we are going to be breaking down the skills matrix. Now, we will talk all about what that is first. But first, I would like my good friend Jennifer to introduce herself. So Jennifer, welcome to the coffee. Uh, hopefully you've brought the pastries. I bought the coffee, please. I'm already past you on the coffee and the pastries. So that was a few hours ago. Wait, how many cups have you had? Um, Just one, but... Let's do cold brew or a hot latte. Those are my two. Okay. I've, I've had three <laughs> hot cups of coffee ready to go. No chocolate milk today, Andrea. What about a pastry? If you had a pastry, what pastry would you have? Uh, well, I just discovered, so you know at Starbucks, they have the ham and cheese croissant. Oh, yes. Yes. That's all I can eat in the morning. And I usually don't even eat breakfast. But I'm just feeling like I need something. That's what I get. Uh, they basically now have the same exact thing at Costco. So if y'all have a Costco in your area, uh, it's it's the same thing. So you get it for like a quarter of the price per item. That, 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 is, that is a good thing. Um, so what about the Pondu Chocolat? Have you ever had the Pondu? Or, you know, if we go fancy, it's just called the chocolate croissant. But the Pondu Chocolat is, if we get the melt of the chocolate, it is it is the best thing ever. Meg, do yeah. they have those in Jersey? No. No. Wait, uh, who has <laughs> Trader Joe's? We have tra what? Trader Joe's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, it good. comes in a two pack. You, It's a chocolate croissant, essentially, but it comes like, it's almost like it's vacuum sealed. You have to put them out overnight and they oh. cool up. And then you put them in the, I don't know, in the morning and they are the most delicious. Like, that sounds great. Really lots, but they're like great. flaky and mm, that's right up my alley. Yeah. yeah. All right, let, let's throw it to the chat. If you had the choice between a ham and Swiss croissant, is it a ham and Swiss ham or and a cheese. pot or a, or a chocolate croissant? Which one are you choosing? Come on. So, so, so bring it in the chat. Croissant. The chocolate croissant. Andrea, are you going with, uh, what are you going to go with Andrea? Uh, um, I really, that's a really tough, that's like a, it's like they're twins. They're my twin babies. It depends on if I want sweet or savory, but they're equal in my eyes. They are. They are. Every I, day. I, I would have thought you were going to go with the chocolate croissant since you like the chocolate milk uh, for coffee. So you're in a box, Craig, you're putting me in a box. <laughs> never. I would never do that. So anyway. I uh, would like to welcome all of you guys here. Uh, we talk about more than coffee and pastry sometimes, uh, but my name is Craig McMichael. I'm the Director of Client and Community Engagement here at ID Lance. Uh, I think all of you know a little bit about us, but for those of you that don't, ID Lance is what we call an agency plus. So not only do we work with clients to build some really kick-ass e-learning experiences, we also care about our community by putting on events like this. Uh, we have a, a, a great opportunity to come together. We've done this. Uh, we try to do it once a month. Sometimes it doesn't always happen, doesn't always work out. But we really enjoy these opportunities to really come together and connect. And as I said, today we're going to be talking about the skill matrix. So what I would love for you guys to do is to identify your ID superpower. You know, it could be nunchuck skills. It could be any of those those different ones, but I'd love for you to identify in the chat and I'm gonna call out someone randomly to talk about what that looks like. 
So yeah, I identify, you know, what, what is your ID, ID superpower, your ID super skill? I'd, I'd love to hear you guys by putting it in the chat of, of what that is. Jennifer, I'm going to throw it to you first while people are put, putting their, their, their messages in. What is your ID superpower? Uh, so when I was interviewing for my job, what really kind of endeared me to what would become my manager and then um, her, um, the manager that she reports to as well as who I interviewed with, like third round. And so my manager, her name's Penny and she's awesome. And she just said, she was like, I love your designs. Um, I had a lot on my portfolio. Uh, I really, I really upskilled myself in Canva, just dove in, you know, head first. Um, it's interesting because I really do have more of a mathematical brain side of me. I was a science major. Um, I'm not artsy per se, but to me, when I, when I look at design and graphic design and you know, job aids and infographics and stuff, I'm seeing it in like alignment and yep. skill. Uh, so, so you, you don't have to be artsy. I never took art once I got past like middle school because that just wasn't my passion or skill set. Um, but if you follow uh, whomever, of course, there's mm -hmm. you know a million people out there that that are just one or two steps ahead of you in whatever skill that you're trying to upskill in. Mm -hmm. So say it's Canva is the platform and you just want to get better at the navigation and functionality and the what kind of things, you know, can I use to accentuate my designs like drop shadow or whatever the case may be. Just start following like one or two people on YouTube. And there was one lady that I subscribed to her newsletter a bit yep. uh, or for a time, but you don't have to go to the expert in the field. First of all, there's too many of them. Yep. Um, but so this this one lady, I'll, Kristen Rappaport, look her. Um, I started following her, followed all of her things, her newsletter, till I felt like I had gotten to the point at which I understood everything she does and got everything out of it that I, I could. Um, and then I went on to find someone else that was like a little more in line with where I was headed so yeah I got to give a shout out by the way to one of our fellow ideal answers Carolyn Brown she I, I'm not sure she's here I didn't see but uh yeah, Carolyn has really been, yeah she, she's been putting some out some really cool like one minute videos so definitely Canva is that way of if you are not into Adobe Canva I feel like is so accessible so I I, I, I definitely would, would dig that I have to call out one person in the chat to find out what their ID superpower is. It's my uh, good friend, Oliver. Oliver, are you there, my friend? I'm here. What is your ID superpower? Oh, I just put working with stakeholders to focus on meaningful outcomes. I, what does that I, mean in English? I need to know I, what that means. I don't know what that means. That's above my pay grade, my friend. I, I don't know. I've been given the nickname Team Switzerland a couple of times, but I'm happy to work with different groups of opposing teams and find that middle ground and explain it to everybody in a way that makes sense and allows us to get somewhere somewhere good but if that's my superpower it was harder and it messed that up plenty of times no over listen. promising <laughs> trying to make everybody happy at the same time i've done all of that Awesome. Well, listen, I've, I've worked with you on a number of projects. Uh, I feel like we are the uh, tag team there of really bringing some stuff together. And I would definitely agree with you that that is your superpower. And I just wanted to say, ah. hey, thank, and thanks for coming. So definitely appreciate that. Uh, let's do one more random person. Donna Marina, what did you say your superpower was? I think the creativity, being able to work in different interactive elements. Nice. Do you have a particular one that you really feel like helps to really like make that creativity pop? No, not that I can think of. <laughs> All right, cool. No, that's cool. So thank you. I, I appreciate that. So 
let's move on real quick and just say, you know, where does this come from? This was not a creative endeavor on my end. This was something that I had learned about from a conference I went to back in December, Learning 2023. And, you know, like I said, it's going to be a chance for us to kind of come together and find that creative spark. But I don't know about you, but I know sometimes when I'm asked to be creative or sometimes I have to reflect, I need a moment to just chill and pause. So what I would like to do is to do what I call a three-minute mind sweep. So I'm calling on all of you. Turn off your cameras. Put yourself on mute. For the next three minutes, let's clear our mind. Let's clear our space. Let's activate ourselves for the for the, this positive experience. Uh, any ideas, any thoughts that come to your mind, write them down on that paper. Write them down on the pad. What that's going to do is going to help to give us the, that, that, that set. And with that, I'm going to be quiet, turn off my camera, and we'll see you in three minutes. Oh, hang on. Meg, we already have, have Craig messing up. Don't share it. All right, welcome back. Um, it was a great opportunity. I'm going to be honest. I used my opportunity to grab my computer cord. I'm on my laptop, did not have it charged, and did not want this to cut out and Jennifer to be left on her lonesome to entertain everybody. So uh, love that experience. Love that idea of a mind sweep. Always a great opportunity to find your center and kind of find where you are at. So let's go to our conversation. 
Uh, like I said, I've known Jennifer, known each other about a year now. I I, I would say uh, she's a proud mem proud ID Lancer. I think she graduated from cohort number two. Um, but she has a really cool journey. Um, she's full time right now. But Jennifer, I'd lo love to hear like, you know, how did you get come into instructional design? What was your experience as a freelance designer? And and what are you doing now? Where are you at? Great. Uh, yeah, thank you for this opportunity. Um, so I so appreciate D-Lance. Uh, D-Lance is just instrumental in my, my upbringing um, into instructional design. And uh, to give a, hopefully a brief um, backstory. So yes, I was in education for 10 years but I left 10 years ago. So I um, taught in K-12 private school um, elementary grades. And when I left um, after my second daughter was born in 2014, uh, I just, I, I thought I would come back. I just didn't know when or how long I'd be out, but I, I stayed at home with my kiddos for, um, two and a half years and but about that about the two-year mark when my youngest was two I was like all right I feel like I need to do something I want to do something I need to contribute um you know I can't just like be room mom for you know years on end so I was still very busy uh but just thinking about next steps and anyway um Long story short, I was uh, at a Bible study at our church and going to pick up my kids in the nursery and someone tapped me and said, you know, so-and-so left, um, you would be great for her role. You need to go talk to, you know, so-and-so. But it was a full-time job and I wasn't quite ready for that. Uh, so anyway, I took it as a part-time job. And then every year that my kids were older and in school longer and more days, I just kept, you know, became more and more of a, more towards a full-time job. That was for three years. And then, then I went full-time for three years. So I was there for six years. Uh, so I equate that part of my career to more like what an administrator would do. Cause I feel like most people are probably familiar with, uh, with education, being a teacher, um, a coach, whatever it may be. So you've got familiar familiarity with um, what the administration does. So that was basically kind of what I was doing. I was doing kind of three different buckets. I was doing curriculum design and development for multiple different levels of high school curriculum. Uh, I was training the trainer. So I was not teaching volunteer teachers, mostly the parents were doing the teaching. Um, so I had to be in constant, well, constant recruiting mode, constant uh, training mode, newsletters, you know, phone, all, all the things. Uh, so that was, that was content course, not course, but curriculum development. And then the other, uh, a third of my job was events. We put on a so large, large church, large staff, large congregation. We put on so many large scale events. So again, with that, tons of project management, um, working with departments across um, campus. And, such. Uh, and then the third was training um, adults. So I did do in-person training. We never did um, virtual training. It was all in-person. This was during the week. This was for the most part, uh, mom groups of different stages and ages and, and such. Um, and then some training on Sunday, Sunday mornings as well outside of day school. So I had a lot of the pieces of instructional design, which yeah. was so nice to, discover once I discovered instructional design. So anyway, I had left ministry before and discovered instructional design because there's no upward mobility. 
I was tapped out um, and I was on church pay. So I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> but for years, my husband was like, what are you going to do next? Like, there's, you know, where is this going to end? Um, so anyway, I left and I just took like a three month just breather at the end of 2022. Mm -hmm. And then uh, right at the turn of 2023, I was like, all right, here we go. What's next for me? Um, I did interview for an assistant uh, principal position at the school where I had previously taught, which I loved. Um, and from the time I was super excited about the posting, from the time the posting to the interview was like a month. And in that time, I just felt like my heart's not in it anymore. I don't know that I would give up. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then after that, so I don't know, maybe February or something, I literally Googled like, what do former teachers do in the workforce? <laughs> so, um, and there we are. So that was February of 2023. And I got my job in March of this year. I didn't start until first of April because of spring break and whatnot. So yeah, it was a year. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a year, but I worked at it like a full-time job. Nice. Um, how did you so so you you're part of the cohort, right? You're part of the cohort yeah. number two. So how did how did like so you had like a lot of really cool experience? And I feel like there's a lot of people in our community, former teachers, you know, had had this job moving now into that freelance, moving to the ID lands, uh, you know, into that ID space. What what did the cohort do in order to, you know, kind of bring that together and, and like yeah, make, make, to yeah. further so, my yeah. Yeah. Um, mostly to further my soft skills in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, I discovered ID Lance pretty early on because when the first cohort was announced and I knew I had to submit a portfolio and I just started it, it was not ready to, to submit as part of an application. Um, so I was like, dang it. So I just followed ID Lance for all of last summer got my portfolio in order, started freelancing off Upwork. Mm -hmm. um, and then also family, not well, family friends. Yes, um, we have one family friend that uh, learns his own business. Uh, we'll just mess around. What can I do for you? Let me do something for you, you know, things like that. So I am not in sales, but I just had to put myself out there. Um, and then when the second cohort applications were announced, I was like, yes, I am ready now. Um, so my husband had his doubts. He was like, I don't get it. So I, <laughs> I was like, just trust me. I yep. need this. Um, there's so many boot camps out there and you can do those. I'm sure they're fantastic. Um, I follow a lot of those individuals as well. But I felt like I was already past a lot of that. Yeah. Um, my work experience and such, I was like, I don't know that I need all, all that. Um, so ID Lance cohort just seemed like a really good fit. And waiting on that cohort too was really good timing. Um, I had interviewed during last summer. Yeah. Um, got to third interview with a huge company. Yamaha just said it didn't work out and I knew if it didn't work out if I didn't get to that final interview it would be because my um e-learning skills were not developed enough yep. so I just kept working at it um and then the ID Lance cohort was fall of last year and it's broken into I mean you can speak more to this correct but the the first month first module is setting up your business and communicating with um, you know, SMEs, project leads. I'm trying to remember all the things. No, that's good. No, yeah, it's, it's basically yeah, the, the business side of it, right? It's like it's like doing all of the communication. It's, it's taking care of that. Uh, you know, I, I, and I think that that that's that, that, that it's cool how it like kind of prepared you. Like you know, you're, I think you we talked about yesterday. We did a little of this pre-interview. Talked about you know how you're able to connect those prior experiences and as as we would move on to those different parts, 
like you were yeah. able to start 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 to kind of make make those connections. So yeah, I think I think what I was I was never been in corporate before. Yeah, I had been in you know, education and then ministry, so you really have to like finesse, you know, how you communicate with you know private school parent population and you know congregation population, and I was just thinking that you had to be so buttoned up and rigid in corporate. Uh, <laughs> But especially Andrea with her just sense of humor was like, yeah, once you once you get a relationship going with people, you know, you can be yourself, use your personality, throw in some, you know, appropriate behavior. I mean, appropriate, appropriate humor, yeah. um, all that. And I was like, okay, you can do that. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah, and like I mentioned, I was a science major in college. I did not take a single business course. Yep. So the cohort really leveled me up to have the basics on how to do all things, you know, base level, you know, business setup. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And so I, so what I'm, what I'm, what I'm interested to hear is like, so, you know, we took the court, we get the business, we got the ID skills, we kind of got those, those technical skills. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I, I want to tie it into to the matrix of, you know, like, like what we're looking at and, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting tool. And I think it would have been one that would have been really interesting to have, like, as you were looking at that journey, because, you know, like some people are like, you know, what, what is this going on? And it's, there's a couple of different ways I think we, we could utilize this. You know, I mm -hmm. think if you're in a management position, you're a learning manager, you're overseeing IDs, you're overseeing developers, it's a great way to assess your people. But I think especially as we talk to freelancers, you know, who aren't there, we don't get evaluations, right? <laughs> like, 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 like we were never able to have that opportunity. And so I think one of the really powerful ways to utilize the skill matrix is regardless of where you are in your journey, you know, if you were like, you know, where Jennifer was a few, couple of years ago, I'm transitioning, I'm kind of new, you know, what's going on. It's a great opportunity to kind of really kind of take a look at it. Or, you know, as, as I start to take on some projects and I'm, I'm working with clients, I start to kind of see, what do I like? You know, one of the big things that Andrea and Parker like to talk about is finding your niche. You know, what is your specialty? What is something that, that you're really good at? And, you know, regardless of where you're at, it's going to have to take a moment to, to, to do that self-reflection. So one of the things that like I would suggest to folks do that three minute uh, meditation, get that mind sweep, take that out and then, you know, kind of come through. So, you know, like I, I want to fast forward just, just a little bit before, before we jump into this, you know, you were a freelancer. Now you're a full-time instructional designer. And yesterday you shared with me, there was like these three questions that you were asking uh, these interviewers. And I, I'd love for you to share those. And like, I, you know, we, we can kind of talk about them and break them down. And then I'd love to get into the, this matrix. So I'd love for you to share those and then we'll go forward. So you do not have to know how to do everything. That's impossible. Um, so once I kind of adopted that mindset, uh, so I just went in with, with my strengths, uh, and I would ask, so beginning of this year, so January, February, halfway into March, I was interviewing a ton, got a lot of good traction, uh, I was in a good place and, uh, I would ask the, uh, at every level of the interview, I would ask them like, what does the team look like? Um, you know, size, uh, how, how it's set up and where, you know, whether or not this is an uh, additional role or a backfill role, like what are you looking for to round out your team? What skills are you looking for? Um, and where do you see me fitting in uh, to that team? Uh, can, I, can, I, can I stop you right there just for real quick? Because okay. I love that question. I think so often when we interview we're, we're selling ourselves and what i love is what you're doing is you're identifying that space how do i fit in where does my skill set sit in, set in because it it changes the narrative and changes that relationship because 
there's a value exchange that goes on in these in these ideas. And I think sometimes we forget about that, right? So I I, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but I, I wanted to point out, I love that that question of like, when you're asking about it, where do I, you know, where, where, you know, where does that, where does that go? Am I a new position? Am I backfilling a position based on my resume, based on my skill set? Where do I fit? So yeah, I, I, I love that. Yeah. And basically it's asking like, what about, you know, first they've seen your resume, then they've seen your portfolio before they ever get to talk to you in person. Like what were some things that stood out to you about either one of those um, you know, you're basically asking like, well, what got me here? Yeah. Um, something from your resume and or portfolio got you to that first round. Um, and then, you know, a another part of it is the personality um, and the, the team, you know, fit, uh, which Aviana is super big on fit um, from a, from a, um, you know, just values personality, you know, how do you get along, teamwork, work effort, you know, all of that. Um, and, you know, like most companies, they would have some type of, you know, we call it our core values, you know, how do you match up with these six, I'll be honest, six core values. Um, so any company is going to have some type of, um, you know, guiding star, or North Star, whatever. And they're trying to see how you fit into that. So, so ask them from, from that standpoint, you know, not do I know Rise or do I know Adobe? Like, how do I fit into the grand scheme of things? Because mm -hmm. ultimately you want to be able to, um, you know, build a career there and progress. And, you know, maybe that takes you, especially as an instructional designer, that could take you into a little bit of a different department. And are you going to kind of get the same thing there as you do? you know, over here. So for example, we have two instructional designers, we're hiring a third and then we have our ID manager, but the other lady, my colleague, she is very much on the clinical side. Yep. So she's developing courses for clinical and I'm more focused on um, like compliance and security and privacy and things like that, that are super important to the care industry. Uh, so you can come in with, you know, a, a very colorful background of, you know, where you came from and what you've done and, and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, just merge very well with instructional design teams. Yeah. And I, I think that's, e I think it's even true for like that, that freelance life is like, you got to find the groups that work, you know, whether it's your own, you know, learning and development firm, whether you're working with different agencies, but here's the deal. One of the beauties of freelancing and, and working in this is understanding the network. The reason I am where I am today is because I was in a orientation with Andrea Dotling and she was like, Hey, you know, I'm doing a thing. Do you want to come do a thing with me? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's, it's, it's finding those opportunities because as, as freelancers, it's, it's those connections that help to kind of grow and expand and work with us. You know, we're working here. Hey, you know what? I, I've got another project I'm working on over here. They need somebody else. I think you would be a great fit and you'd be a great team. So it's it, it's figuring out, you know, like, you know, one of the, the great things uh, about it is like, it's figuring out, you know, who do you like to work with? You know, I know I like to work with Oliver. Him and I have worked on a really wicked hard project over the last, you know, last few months. We work really well. We can bounce different ideas off of it. We're bringing different mindsets and we're being able to, to work and, and to think about things differently. And we know that we like to work together. So it, it, it's having that, that sense where as we move on and as we go forward, we're able to do that. And I think one of the ways we're able to do that is by being able to evaluate our skills. So what I'd love to do is I'd love to kind of go over this just a little bit. There's all sorts of things you can read on here about instructions for if you're an employee or an instruction with a manager, but here's the deal. This is a great framework for whether you're doing a personal reflection or whether you have a team reflection. And what I really love about it, it's broken up by, you know, are you a, de a developer? Are you a designer? There's a difference. But one of the things that I like to talk about when people ask is like, hey, Craig, what do you, do you like? You know, it's like, I like kind of doing both because, you know, it's something, you know, that, that Donna talked about earlier is the creativity piece. 
sometimes no, like I find my most creativity when I know the constraints kind of go forward. I know if I'm working in rise, there's going to be different constraints than if I'm working in storyline or if I'm working in a micro learning site or doing video and it's finding that. But what I think is the great opportunity here, as you go through this skill and this task area, you start to find your niche. You start to find out, Hey, this is something I really like. I enjoy writing. That's one of my favorite things to do. I, you know, I do instructional design. I write about college football. I write about college across. I have an idea of what I like to do. So I like to do the storyboarding. I also like the needs analysis part. I like, I like having that idea, you know, um, sometimes developing, I will do it, but I know that there's people that are better than me that are doing it and that's okay. But, but it's having that understanding. So, you know, one of the things that, that we take a look at is we scale this, you know, how much do you enjoy doing this task? Do you love it? Do you hate it? You know, how would you rate your proficiency? You know, does this a task align with your career aspirations? Sometimes that's very difficult as a freelancer is to understand where am I at? Path am I on? And this is what I really love about the skills matrix is it provides a moment to pause. And one of the things that I really love is this idea of having an accountability buddy whether it's one person, whether it's a group of people. You don't have to fill this all out in 10 minutes. You don't have to fill this out in a, you know, in, in an hour. Take some time with this. Be intentional of filling this out, kind of going through where do I need to grow? Where do I need to expand? And this is also going to help with those roles. You know, I, there's a lot of those LinkedIn hiring gurus out there that you see and they talk about hiring. And sometimes you're going to have to craft a resume. You're going to have to craft an experience based on a particular area. You know, they're going to be asking for something, whether that's contract, whether that's full time. And one of the things that I've heard from Jennifer is that when she was interviewing, even though she didn't have the skill matrix here, she had an understanding of who she was as an instructional designer and what she could bring to a particular team and how that sort of fit in. So it gives you very much a point of view. And what it also does is says, when you're meeting there, hey, I'm interested in my own development. How can you help me grow? I really wanna learn more about doing a needs analysis. I can be an order taker and I can go and write something or I can go develop something. But I want, I'm, I'm a curious person. I wanna know more. How am I able to do that? And I think this is what I really love about this. And even from a developmental standpoint, you know, again, bringing back something that Jennifer talked about, she wanted to learn graphic design. Adobe Acrobat is scary. Why, what, what are all these layers? What is this pain on the right-hand side? I don't know what that is. It, 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 it freaks me out. But here's what I do know. I can start with can, canvas. So I got to make sure I get it right because I always get Canva and canvas wrong, even though I work in both. But that doesn't matter. I get them both wrong. What do I like to learn? What do I need to learn? You know, when I first started to use Storyline, I didn't even know what Storyline was. I knew what PowerPoint was. And guess what? That provided me the base level to have an understanding of how Storyline works. I am not an expert when it comes to Storyline. I am a good Storyline person. If you want to be great, you want to do something more, there's some really great opportunities. I know Allie, uh, who you know we work with, does some great one-on-one -on -one opportunities, some coaching opportunities to be able to figure out how that works. One of the things I really love about the ID Lance community is the sense that when I was stuck on story, I could ask the question and someone would either answer it or want to jump on a call to be able to work that out. You know, figuring out, you know, what is Camtasia? How do we do editing? What's gamification? The skills matrix opens you up to thinking about what else is out there. What else is possible? So, you know, I think Jennifer, I want to I want to thank you because you shared some really good stories, and you know we've looked at how you know this this fits in, and I and I bet you it would, it would have helped you know twenty twenty two twenty twenty three when you were interviewing to be able to, to to be able to do this. What I would love to do is I. I would love to hear questions from the group itself, whether it's about the skill matrix, freelancing, anything else. 
uh, you can either throw them in the chat or you can come off mute and just, you know, th throw, throw it out there. But, uh, and I'm going to start with that, with that first question. So as, as you guys are thinking about it, uh, Jennifer, you guys are talking about hiring and you're talking about hiring a instructional designer. How could your team utilize the skill matrix in helping to make an informed decision about who to bring onto your team? Yeah. Uh, so first, like our team is that we have the ID side of the house, which is, you think of it in terms of the Addy model, it's um, the analysis design development. And then we have, we call them the LMS guys. They just happen to be three guys that are on um, LMS. So that's, you know, implementation. And, you know, unfortunately we do not have a very robust evaluation um, set up. We have identified that as a need going forward. Um, so there's, you know, we don't, IDs don't work in the LMS, um, but every company and every team is set up differently. Uh, so yeah, we are not hiring for LMS. We don't need that on our ID team. The, the coworker that left six weeks ago or such, she, her heart was really in project management. She got acquired by some other company to focus solely on project management. So we're, we're backfilling her position, but she had project management skills like way up here. We don't need quite that in-depth um, skill set, but we, you know we need some some other skill sets in there. Like I don't know Camtasia; I've never worked in it. Um, the other ID is is upskilling herself right now. So if we were to find someone that has more of the video uh, Camtasia editing and could come in, kind of hit the ground running like that. And that's what we need. So because it's a backfill position, um, it's not that we're trying to backfill it with the same exact person, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, this is a real, um, you know, point at which we have to evaluate, and we have evaluated what do we really need out of this next panel. Um, so this really just breaks it down in a nice visual, um, yeah, and all of these pieces are obviously part of instructional design. Um, so yeah, a few we've you know cross out LMS, basically cross out project management uh, because I came in with that. So yeah, it's a good, uh, definitely a good jumping off point for sure. That makes sense. That makes sense, and, and I like that. And you know, it's, this is a document that I've I've talked to with clients. You know, it's if I think about this, we're sitting down and they're in between of either hiring a full-time ID lancer or they're hiring someone maybe as a freelancer, because, you know, we work with a lot of different companies and sometimes we come in to do projects. Sometimes we're, we're coming in to do a particular part. This is a, you know, this is, this is part of the process of what I'm sharing it. You know, I'm sharing this very document. And as I'm talking to a, a manager, you know, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, as you think about your ideal employee, you know, what, are, what, you know, what are, how are those skills really kind of, kind of looking at, you know, have you done this with your own team? Have you asked them to fill this out and made, made that sort of evaluation? Um, and I also say, you know, this, this matrix isn't for everybody, you know, it, it, it's, you know, not everything is going, going to pertain, but I think if you look at it from that global perspective, and when I've had these conversations, it's over a series of times where there's a internal evaluation where they're looking at these different areas and these different uh, components. They're able to evaluate, you know, what are the needs? Where are the gaps in my, my particular team? And it's based on, you know, my observations, but more importantly, what does it look like when I have these one-on-one -on -one or these group meetings with my team? Where are they able to, you know, where do they see themselves as really strong? You know, where is an area that they need, you know, to help with? And that's one of the great things we're able to do at ID Lance um, is able to kind of come in and kind of support. You know, we've done that with a, a couple of different areas where, hey, you know what, listen, we don't 
have the ability for some micro learning. Can your team come in and be able to, to do that in an expert way and, and be able to, to really, you know, bring that together? Or, you know, does your team have video experience? Do you guys have video developers? We have some storyboards. We have the ideas. Are we able to do that? So I think it's like, as we think about utilizing this document, we have to figure out where we're sitting. Is this a inward looking document? Or I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of seeing this, I'm walking through, I'm able to do this. Am I part of a larger team? Whether that's as a freelancer, whether that's as a full-time employee, am I able to bring that up at my, you know, those one-on-one -on -one meetings? Am I able to see that growth? Or am I gonna have to be able to locate on YouTube, LinkedIn Learning, some of these, you know, Coursera, whether that, what, what that is, what does that actually um, look at to be able to uh, evaluate kind of kind of where they're at. Um, I kind of hope that, that that makes sense of kind of like how we've used it a little bit. It's not something new, but I'd love to hear, you know, where are those other questions of like how to use this or, you know, where, where is there anything else from there from the, the group that I'd love to, to hear from? And maybe I have the answer more importantly, maybe I don't and that's okay too. Yeah, Craig, one thing I'm just thinking about um, to go through this matrix is, you know, whether or not you enjoy a task is not necessarily related to your proficiency score on it. Um, so, for example, the, the uh, if you have on here, under the instructional developer, the animation tools, it says, for example, Beyond. Uh, so I had had very little experience in Beyond. Uh, when I took the level and put store that project lab and, but I always wanted to, to go after it. Ooh, it's just that darn license is so expensive. So my, my enjoyment of it, you know, was like four or five, but my proficiency was like a one. So mm -hmm. that was something that came up in my interview with my manager. She showed me a beyond video that she had just taught herself how to do and was super excited about it. Uh, and I um, was like an explainer video. And, you know, I just kind of showed like how hungry I was to learn that. She was like, oh man, that'd be great. And anyway, once I was, you know, within about a few weeks of, of being hired and on the team, um, another request came from a different department for something very similar to what she had done and beyond. She was like, you know what? I'm going to have you jump in on this kickoff meeting anything. Anyway, she ended up transferring her license, her, you know, corporate license over to me. Yeah. She's like, you have like about, you know, a few weeks, like learn it enough to show them something like a little like teaser. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, you have the runway to you know, take the time and teach it to yourself. And of course that was just YouTube videos and following this one guy in particular, uh, and uh, so it ended up, it was a long project because I had to, to, you know, learn it on my own, but I was super proud of the end result. And then that one video turned out to, they wanted to expand it to like all eight um, points of like how to administer the right dosage of medication. Anyway, so that's just one example of like, you can have a level one experience with something or proficiency with something but if you're hungry for it, um, just tell them, you know, be, be, be smart in the way that you present your skill set. I love that. I, I love that. Cause that, that, that's what I was going to ask you. I was going to say like, Hey, what, is there a tangible way you've done this? But, but I think that makes sense. And I think that's, that's the biggest part is like, do you enjoy doing it? Because I, I'm sure there's the, the inverse is possible too, right? Like, are you good at a task where you just don't like doing it? Like, does it not, if you Marie sure. Kondo it, would you let that go? Like, does it not bring you joy? <laughs> could, 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 could you could you let that go? Is, is there an ability to do that? Um, yeah. but no, I I, th I think that's fantastic. And um, I want to check real quick the chat. Is there anything? Uh, oh, Andrea asked, is anyone a manager talk about how they might be able to use this with their team? Anybody want to share? I think that would be great. Do 
Bueller. Bueller. Anyone know the reference? Who was the director of the movie where we had Ben Stein say Bueller? Bueller. Anybody? Yes. Yes, Oliver. I've, I've had luck in the past <clears throat> giving credit to teammates who are particularly good in one area or another. Yeah. And have them run internal trainings to just cover the basics. The goal isn't to get everybody to be an expert at everything, but yeah. like, for example, I find design work incredibly challenging and hearing from a teammate who's really good at it, who explains like the three things that you need to focus on the most was super helpful. So it was a good way to up-level everybody's skill a little bit and give people credit for being experts in one area or another. I love that. I love that. Just have a little coffee, have maybe a pastry, all get together and, and be able to chat and just be able to learn and grow. So I, I love that. Awesome. Thank you. All right. I think that is going to wrap up our session. Uh, I hope the conversation, like I said, continues. Um, I really appreciate everyone kind of coming. This was a little bit of a different experience, but I wanted to have this conversation because Jennifer, uh, I really appreciate all of your shares. I think some of us have been on a similar journey as you and being able to connect and be able to kind of see how, how this works. You know, like I said, I really, really thank you. Uh, please reach out on, you know, LinkedIn uh, or in, in our community uh, to, you know, join us. Love to have more one-on-one -on -one conversations about the scale matrix, but uh, thank you all very much. And I hope you guys enjoy your Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.